Hello everyone and welcome to my Lego room. I'm TJ the Brickwright and today we are going to be talking about my newest in my line of uh, life-size lightsaber builds. And this is another one of the crossover between Star Wars and Marvel. Obviously you guys know it's what's coming, the Infinity Saber. But first I wanted to do a quick tutorial on why it is the Infinity Saber and why I named it that way. A lot of you will already get this, it's totally fine. but. We need to clear this up just in case you didn't see my YouTube short or in case you don't understand the nomenclature of the Infinity Gauntlet and Nano Gauntlet. So here we have the Infinity Gauntlet used by Thanos made on the planet or the place in space called Nidavellir and it was made by the dwarves. Here we have the Nano Gauntlet which was made by Tony Stark which is why it looks like an Iron Man Gauntlet because it literally is. It just can hold the stones. So we have both of those things. So again, the Infinity Gauntlet is gold. The Nano Gauntlet is more Iron Man designed. So set those aside. Here we have a lightsaber with all six Kyber crystals that are available. We don't include the black one because it's ridiculously overpriced right now. But we have an Infinity Saber that holds the six widely available kyber crystals and so this is the nano saber because it is tony stark themed and designed so we have mostly silvers and dark reds with some gold highlights just like the nano gauntlet and then finally we have this the infinity saber and I want to talk to you guys about why I designed it the way I did, but I'm very excited with it. I actually did my first uh, couple tries of making this video without the lights on it properly, and so you couldn't see the stones hardly at all. Um, but we have some really good things happening. And first up, I will show you that, yes, it does close. It holds the stones in there. There's a little bit of rattling. You can hear them, but only just a little bit. It's not nearly the same as the nano gauntlet and I may actually need to go through the nano gauntlet or sorry <laughs> the nano saber I may need to go through and uh, tighten up those things just a little bit um, but I want to go ahead and explain to you what's going on here I do not have the instructions available I know I said they would be but as always I ran into issues trying to build the thing in stud.io one of those being time constraints but let's talk about it so originally I had designed the uh, Infinity Saber to uh, basically look like this. So if you picture that you take the uh, bottom uh, cross guard off and just like this and that's pretty much how it'll go. I even have a couple of pictures that hopefully I can throw up here for you that kind of show the progress of the uh, Infinity Saber as I was building it. Um, one of the things I tried to do was to take pieces that were readily found in the infinity gauntlet and a couple of the pieces that bugged me were the giant uh wedge slopes that are on the sides of it they're what make the cross guard here and as i looked at those i suddenly realized that man i could probably do something with them uh, and in the end i ended up deciding that it would make a really good cross guard and they'd look pretty neat thankfully i had a lot of these pieces in different colors and so i was able to play around and design it as I went. Um, I may include for everybody's viewing pleasure a sped up version of when I transferred uh, the multicolor version, the prototype version of this thing into gold. It was kind of fun to see it transition from one to the other, which was, I don't know, I, I think it's kind of neat to see it turn into the Infinity Saber as we see it here. So it was originally going to be single sided, but then as I was talking to my brother in law, Scott, who I used to do the podcast with, uh, he mentioned something about being Darth Maul and having a double sided version. And then I suddenly realized that Thanos's weapon in, in, in Endgame was double sided. Hopefully we can have a picture of that thrown up as well. And as I sat there, I said, well, oh, man, really? You had to do that to me, Scott? So I had to take the saber that looked like this with the bottom section cut off there and make it a double-ended lightsaber. But it's kind of smaller. I imagine it would be very similar to what the uh, Inquisitors use 
as far as the size of the handle and I think I'm pretty close on that. Um, Thanos's hand is obviously bigger than mine so I picture that he would use it as a one-handed weapon and uh, just have it come out of one side or the other. Now one thing you may also notice about this saber is that it's all very monochromatic. Uh, it's all just a single color gold. I was really trying to evoke the Infinity Gauntlet using this, uh, using this build. However, there's one major difference between this and the Infinity Gauntlet, and that is the stones themselves. So if I pull, put this aside here, one of the cool parts about the Infinity Gauntlet is that the gold is broken up both by some of the dark tan that you see inside there, but also by the stones themselves. The stones add quite a bit of color to the build. And for a long time, I struggled with the idea of putting the stones on the outside of the lightsaber. I may have made the wrong decision in what I, what I finally chose to do um, by putting them on the inside. However, um, I think I made a good choice there. The major reason why I put them on the inside was because I could not get them to stay in their positions if they were on the uh, on the outside. It was very difficult to work up a system for them to be like wedged in or use the little rubber Technic connectors or things like that to hold them in place. And that was very frustrating to have to try to work with that. Uh, in the end, the mechanisms to hold it in were way too bulky and would not fit in any kind of a lightsaber handle. Um, it looked really good in some concepts that I did, having the crystals like up here in the handles or in the hilt cross guards. Um, that looked really fun. And then practically I was saying, well, if the blade can come out of either end, I really felt like they needed to be centralized in the build. And if you're going to hold it from the middle, your fingers would be touching the stones directly, which as we learn can be a painful or very damaging process. So I decided that putting them in the middle and enclosing the lightsaber was still a really good bet. There is something that I thought about as well, which was adding some uh, colorful pieces around the outside. Uh, indicating the different stones that were inside or possibly leaving little indicator lights around it that would tell you which color was active at the time if that's how it worked but that did not come to fruition um, in the end i uh, that's another thing that i had to decide as well is how do these multi-crystal lightsabers work and i always pictured them very similar to those uh, colored pencils that had the multiple colors on them where you could flick one color out at a time that's pretty much what I felt like these things would do is you would pick a, one color at a time and choose which blade would come out depending on the properties that you wanted you could turn them all on at the same time but they'd be extremely destructive and it could even destroy the lightsaber hilt itself very similar to what uh, Thanos did the second time he used the gauntlet um, it nearly destroyed him as well as the stones and the gauntlet it ended up being fused to his hand, <laughs> which was uh, pretty gnarly. So I'll do a quick little spin here. If you, some of you may notice that my little stand here is designed a little bit like the stand that lifted the gauntlet at the end of Age of Ultron when Thanos said, fine, I'll do it myself. So that's how I designed, designed that. I don't think I'll include the instructions for this. I'll try to build a different version of the stand because uh, these little candlestick parts that I used a lot of are pretty pricey. So I'm going to try to reduce the cost for that. All right. So let's show you a good view. One thing I, you don't get a lot of view of is the back. So here's the back. Uh, the ends are identical all the way around, uh, front and back, but the center is where you get the most difference. So you get just a, a few different parts right there and a nice little symbol right in the middle. And then, oh, looks like my uh, things are wearing out. <laughs> my hinges. That's okay. And then on the other side, you can see that we do have this 
pretty significant split down the middle, but I think it holds itself together quite well. If you really wanted to, uh, you could even find a way to tie them together more, a little more permanently, but I don't think that's necessary. And then of course, when we open them, we see we've got all six crystals and they are in there pretty good. As a matter of fact, I can shake it around and they hold in as long as I don't shake it forward because then of course they all fall out. But there you can get a nice little look at the inside and how that works. There's actually a trick to placing them in here and I'll go over that. I'll probably just include that in the instructions. And that's it. The Infinity Saber is complete. I am so happy with how it turned out. I try not to touch it too much. I actually wore some uh, latex gloves when I put the gold pieces on here eventually, originally. That was so that I didn't rub the gold off of these pieces because these are the drum lacquered gold. So the, uh, the gold can actually rub off on anything that it touches. Thank you so much for checking out my build. I hope you found it entertaining and I hope it was good enough to bring you back in the future as well. And until then, I'm TJ the Brickwright. Play well.